Hey, what's up? It's Kit. Time for another video. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most basic functions of a modern fishing reel and also one of the most misunderstood, the drag. If you've just clicked on this video and have not joined us yet, please consider subscribing. This channel talks about the hows and whys of fishing and we cover everything from big game, ultralight, everything in the middle, including fly fishing. Today, we're talking about the drags because it's one of the most misunderstood functions of the reel. And I'm actually kind of surprised that I am talking about this quite late. Should have been one of the first videos I actually created. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, each of these reels actually have drags in them and even this fly reel. So there's, there's a lot to actually digest. So I'm going to break this video into two pieces. This is the first one. And later on in the second video, we're going to dive into the nuts and bolts of the drag and know for certain exactly what happens. Okay, I'm not going to talk about the mechanical part of the drag, but what exactly happens when you're fishing because that's the most practical use and something that you really need to understand. Um, let's go with the very basic first. And we're talking about the spin cast reel. Spin cast reel, very, very easy to use. Press a button, cast it out. Boom, reel re-engages and that's it. It's actually really good for kids. However, a lot of people would probably actually say like, what the heck is he using? using a spin cast reel for. Actually, I needed a very slow reel and I was looking for a very slow reel for very tiny crankbaits and I found that this was actually quite slow. And that is exactly why I have this. 14 inches per turn of the handle and that's exactly what I need. Now, very light drag. It only has about six pounds, I believe. So that's three kg. So perfect for really light line. To adjust the drag, you either Put it towards the plus to tighten it like so to loosen it you go on the negative negative. and the good thing about this is that when you're actually fishing and you're fighting the fish and you want to adjust the drag all you do is just move it with your thumb so very very basic very very easy and it works now for my reuse it works really well i use this with a bait casting rod and uh yeah it works really really well especially for what i've mentioned like really tiny crankbait the resistance of the crankbait is good for slow speed reels because it makes it really dive down deep now again max drag for this is only 3 kg which is perfect for the use that i have for it and this is where you adjust it there's uh, some that have it on the side but this particular model has it here for spinning reels all of the spinning reels would have a dra drag adjustment on top of the spool okay so it's easy as turning it counterclockwise or clockwise it tightens and loosens the spool pretty straightforward there are some that have the drags actually at the back a knob at the back and those are actually kind of uh, also easy to use you just click numbers to tighten or to loosen the drag i don't have one because uh, most they're mostly used for fresh water although there is a uh, what's called a bait runner that has the front drag and then the back drag the, there's two drags basically one for the bait and then one for the the tension of the spool the drag acts like a brake so th this is why it's very important because it provides friction to help you land your fish it tires the fish out so if you put example you put two pounds of pressure and you need a, a scale that has one of these markers when you set your drags okay let's say it goes seven pounds or seven kg in this instance now if it's seven kg it means that when the fish runs running against seven kg of pressure from your just your reel alone compound that with the with the strength of the rod which is the bend of the rod and what happens is that it the seven actually increases to, I don't know, probably 10 or 12. So the fish has to first bend the rod before the reel actually gives line. And that's what tires the fish. On 
fly reels is at the back okay so again loosen clockwise counterclockwise i reel left when i'm fly fishing my drag knob is on this side if you draw if you reel right it would be on your left hand side especially with fly fishing your leader is going to be quite thin and the drag has a very special purpose for fly reels the biggest thing is start up inertia and your drag ramp up which means from zero until the fish runs that start up bit of resistance is very important because if it rises up sharply what happens is that it breaks your leader and you don't want that so for fly reels the the drag is actually very very important and again the startup inertia makes or breaks the reel so there are reels out there with super high startup inertias and yeah it breaks their tippet so they're not really good reels what what you want when you're buying a fly reel is to look for one that has a really good startup inertia and it has a lot to do with the type of material that you use or they use for their brakes this has a cork drag so startup inertia when it comes to cork is actually really good there are also uh, rulon materials so that the worst thing that you could put in is actually carbon because carbon spikes up really fast and although when when it's consistent already when the fish is running carbon uh it's a very good drag material it's just that the startup inertia is quite high so for big game it's probably good but for lighter game probably not something that would do you well especially when you're using very light tippets then overheads have two configurations they have star drags and they're also lever drag reels lever drags you push it forward and you push it back to tighten you push it forward push it back you go to free spool for star drags you tighten the star like so and that sets your drag okay for free spool you press the thumb bar and it goes now there are also star drag reels that have a clutch okay right there so that's your free spool that's your engage and when you engage the spool or engage the reel the drag kicks in if you pull it back it's on free spool as you can see there so there are different configurations the distinct advantage of the lever drag is that you have a preset knob right here if you push it forward you can see that the drag is engaged now that's preset i've already put in my my drag to however um poundage or kg resistance that i want if you want to really maximize the drag you put it on full or what's commonly called sunset and basically when you go on full the spool is locked go all the way back and it's free okay so right there so that's when you're casting or you're dropping down now the the preset knob is unique or the uh, lever drag is unique because of the preset knob so it means that on storage you could just actually put it on free spool engage your clicker and you put a, uh, a, a piece of tape like what i have here to keep the line from uh, moving around and you're good but the good thing is that since it is preset whatever you put it on the next time you go fishing you just put it on strike and you're good to go that's it now for storage especially for star drag reels you have to actually back them up because you don't want the drag washers to stick together if they stick together you need to change them because the drag washers will get ruined especially the carbon bits um it's actually the same for pretty much all reels okay so when i store mine i actually put them all on the lowest or zero setting and just to keep the drag washers pristine okay so when not in use they're all loose just like that okay even with the fly reels especially with the fly reels because i don't really want to um, risk the uh the damage to the tippet because fly fishing you're dealing with really thin tippets and uh, or very tip of the leader which is called the tippet and uh, fly fishing is actually quite sensitive to those things because you're trying to catch a really big fish or a decent sized fish at the very least with really really thin leaders or leader tips and that's the weakest link so uh very very crucial so earlier i spoke about the inner workings of how 
the drag of the fly reel work and if it's not apparent to you yet some reels actually have a difference on how their drag works okay now it's according the fishing style really for the fishing type now these would be very good examples pretty much the same reels one has a higher gear ratio than the other one is specifically designed for slow jigging while the other is specifically designed for fast jigging in the same water depth okay now one is not built to replace the other they're actually kind of a system okay so when the fish are more active you use uh, fast jigging and when the bites are less or far few and far in between when they're less active you use slow jigging so pretty much the system but there's a slight difference there now the most important thing here is that since we're talking about drag is that this one is actually stronger but it's slower gear okay now if you imagine a winch okay a winch is quite strong so since it has gears that are slower and are a bit more reinforced it actually has about a kilo of drag okay just because for especially for fast jigging you're pumping you're pumping the uh, the fish in okay whereas with slow jigging you're pointing the rod down and you're reeling slowly just because of the style the slight difference in styles the drags have already changed or the power of the drag has already changed now here's a, an even extreme example this is for blue water okay this is the osha jigger 1000 okay it is a high gear reel this is a uh, Revo Inshore by Abu Garcia. This is these are old reels. I think this is 2017, and this is uh, a bit older. This has 10 kg of drag, and this has this is a blue water reel. This is an inshore reel. It says it in its name. But see, the the, the difference here is that the fishing style is actually different. Okay, now you're maybe dropping deep for this one 7 kg drag you're dropping deep okay but this reel is actually again for slow jigging and it's built with the mind that you're keeping your rod tip down and just slowly reeling in has a fast ratio because it's a slow jigging reel there are also power gear version of versions of this and more than likely it also has at least one or two kilos more of drag because of the nature of well the style that it was built for whereas of course with this you're not dealing with great depth okay when you're inshore fishing most, most of the time you're fishing shallow and most of the time you're also fishing around obstructions so you will need that drag you will need a very strong drag to actually winch the fish out okay so there is something about the uh, fishing style that has a lot to do with the drag it's not just because it kind of doesn't make sense that this is a bigger reel built for offshore and this is something built for shallows and then or built for the shallows and then it's stronger it has nothing to do with that it has a lot to do with the fishing application that it's used for okay so you will need to like, take for example when you're fishing shallow and you're fishing for a grouper with crankbaits you would need the extra drag to actually winch the fish out of structure because it lives near structure whereas with slow jigging it's kind of almost pulling the fish in and teasing it out of structure or having it strike away from structure and fighting it away from structure rather than actually winching them out so the extra power that this presents is actually something that doesn't make sense for this reel now also keep in mind that you're measuring drags when the spool is full and this is something that we're gonna talk about in the next video all right so i hope that actually clears things up for a lot of people that don't understand why some reels are stronger than others all right so again this is part one part two will be uh, more on the nuts and bolts of the drag if you like the video uh please consider giving it a like or, or, or you know what just don't just just go and click on the like button and while you're at it also click on the subscribe button click on that bell so that each time i upload a video especially the part two of this because you don't want to miss that we're really gonna nerd out 
All right, so when I release that video, you'll get notified. And uh, yeah, the YouTube algorithm seems to like it too. So please consider doing that. Uh, again, subscribe, click on the notification bell, and like the video so that uh, other people would see it. The more you like, actually, the more it gets shown to other people. So please do that. Um, that's it for now. Watch out for part two because it will be a bit more in-depth than this. And I'll see you in the next one. Class dismissed.